First of all, thank you, Mr. Fabian, for this opportunity because really, really, you make my day because uh, I get this uh, opportunity after a long time, okay? <laughs> and uh, of course, that's because you are, your schedule is very tight. And uh, at the same time, you are a very humble person because you are open-minded and uh, uh, you give your information and knowledge and experience without any borders, which is that your brand. <laughs> that you <are> <laughs> thank you, appreciate it. <laughs> So, uh, so for my audience, uh, I will talk a little bit about you, if you don't mind, uh, Mr. Fabian. Uh, just uh, correct my pronunciation about your full name, Mr. Fabian Gerhelter. It is. It is pretty good. Yeah. It is. It is very good. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. I can repeat <laughs> <it> again. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Fabian is a brand strategist, a strategist, and the founder and principal of Finin or Finin, Finin, right? Finian, oh, Finian, yes. Finian, mm -hmm. Finian. Los Angeles uh, based consultancy specializing in turning venture, ventures in, into brands. Uh, Mr. Fabian is also a columnist for Inc. and Forbes and has been published by the likes of the Washington Post, Mashable, and Entrepreneur. He's an advisory board member of Santa Monica College and a frequent speaker and, and mentor to entrepreneurs worldwide. And he proved that now, worldwide. And he's a Global 100 mentor at the Founder Institute. And his book, How to Launch a Brand, of course, this bio is not updated because you, you, already, <laughs> you already have another two books bigger than that, right? So, okay, How to Launch a Brand is a number one in Amazon bestseller. Thank you, Mr. Fabian, for this opportunity. And um, we'll go ahead with a little bit of your quotes, which is, I love it. And one of them is in your world now, okay? <laughs> I will start with that. Um, you said that branding is a layer of insurance for your company. It's very deep. Branding is a layer of insurance for your company. You are investing in it as a strategy. So you don't have to compete on your price and can gain a loyal tribe that participates in your brand and not your offering alone. This, it's reminding me, Mr. Fabian, with uh, Mr. Martin uh, Neumeyer in his book, Brand Gap, I, I think page number five or something, I don't remember. He, he's talking about um, transition from USP to UBS, from unique sim proposition to unique bu buying state of customer, which I call it human-centric, okay? The customer-centric. Yeah. Uh, 100% I agree with both of you because uh, now with the too much clutters, with too much competitions, we have to focus not about the product itself or services because we have a, a huge competitions. We have to, um, to put the spotlight, not in the product, in the product plus in the consumer uh, in the, in the consumers or in the target audience. How we can reach that with, with a competition regardless of what your market because some of Business owner, Mr. Fabian, told me, no, what, whatever we have, we want to sell and, and get uh, you know, money as simple as that. So they don't care what's the strategy, what's your BS, what's your USB. <laughs> so they don't aware about that. So from, you, from your perspective, uh, and by the way, I think you work in Kuwait as well, right? Yes, yes, I did yes. work with, uh, yeah, with a client in Kuwait, that. yeah. Okay, so yeah, yeah. you are close by <laughs> to our culture. So how we can um, educate our clients about the importance of what you, what you said about focusing in, in customer experience more than just the product itself. Yeah, go ahead. Look, I mean, in the end, you, you, can't, you can't be a brand if you only push products, right? If all you do is push products, you can be an Amazon reseller, you can make your stuff in China, you just push product, right? Totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But you will not turn into a brand that people, that people buy a t-shirt of, right? With the logo on, where they, they are part of a tribe, where it stands for something that is bigger than the product. And why is that important? Because like I say in, in that quote, well, here it is, right? Uh, like, I say, like I say in that quote uh, that, that you just happen to, happen to have on cue, um, you know, if you, if, if you 
if you infuse heart and soul into your brand, like if you stand for something that is bigger than your product, and if you wear it on your sleeves, right? So everyone knows that, yes, they have a great product. It's a good product. It's a great, it's a great value proposition for me to buy the product. But the brand stands for something that is bigger. And it stands for something that I can relate to, right? And every day via social media and via emails and via whatever I see from that brand, I'm reminded that the brand and I, we, 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 we think alike, right? We, we're in a parallel universe, right? Um, not a metaverse, that's a different story, but a, par a parallel universe, right? Um, and, so, and so how do you do that? You do that by thinking outside of your product, right? So if you, if you, have, if you have a product assortment, you have to think about who is, like, why do we exist as a company to provide these products? It's not just about what each of the product does, but it is about us as a brand, what we stand for, what combines all of these products and our, our ideology, um, and that's what we need to share, and that's what it's about. Because in the end, it is more about creating valuable, valuable you know, insights and stories and connections um, with your customers then about selling the product because the product will sell itself once you do that right of course it has to be a good product right but but i mean that that's what that's what you need to do and, and quite quite frankly um it, it is as simple as you sitting down and thinking about what is that essence of your brand it's that simple it's really not magic right we as brand people we love to say there there are 50,000 books and 70,000 rules and 80,000 ways of calling it like brand essence, brand DNA, North Star, you know, whatever. It's about you sitting down and really defining what is it that we care about, that our product facilitates, that our audience cares about as well. I, I have a thought and um, what they call it, uh, a big question in my mind just happening now. A brand is burn. Uh, uh, when sorry, it's, uh, uh, what they call it, the time of uh, uh, brand can be exist only if there's competitions. If there's no competition, there's no no such a brand. I will give you just two examples. We are in a small market, and we have one telecommunication company, which is a monopoly. Even if they don't any marketing, just there's no brand strategy, nothing. But people, there's a need. You no, know? there's need. So everybody will go to this single um, telecommunication company. So they don't care about marketing, even about uh, brand strategy because they are monopoly. That's the first, first scenario. Second scenario, if you go for, for example, to a poor country and uh, we're selling a water without even label, they don't care because they are looking for a water. Regardless, it's a brand, it's, uh, whatever, just name it. So we have exception from that, uh, the cluttering, if there's no clutter, as simple as that. So if there's one of the things, what do you think? About I, I like, I like your thinking. I like your thinking, right? So there are some commodity offerings where, where they are pretty much a monopoly or they're just basic human needs, um, you know, and, and there's no competition within the market. And so of course you can just sell it. The problem is that thinking will backfire at some point because at some point there's, you know, you're selling the only water in your town, right? And then suddenly there's a new kid on the block saying, well, I'm going to sell water too, but we're going to actually give it a label. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're actually, and that's the problem, right? So you might know, you might not know, but I'm, I'm currently starting a new company, which is outside of the branding world, it's in the product space, right? Um, which for me is very exciting as someone who preaches brand all day long. Now I'm creating a brand. And I'm creating a brand, hopefully, hopefully it will be a brand, right? I'm, I'm, I'm creating the foundations of a brand that is completely innovative in a space and no one else does what I will be doing. But I need to build a brand because if I do it right, within months, people will copy me. Right. There's right? No and so, and, and, so and, and, and that's why, back to that, that quote here, right? That's why... If I create, if I, even if I have an innovative product, if I spend time creating a strong brand that differentiates, right? Not only on the product level, but on the, on the brand level, it's going to be so hard for someone six months, 12 months, you know, two years later to come in and say, oh, we're doing that too. 
because my tribe is going to be, no, you're not. Like he was first and what he's doing is it has heart and soul and it's part of our tribe. We're part of that, right? So they will hopefully support my brand over a copycat brand because they can see through that, right? And so, so, so to your example, right? You're right, but you should always, always invest into, into the idea of, of, because of turning no, into brands. There's number one, there's no guaranteed about if there's a newcomers, that's number one. Yeah. Second, you, ca you cannot uh, uh, say, this is my invention, this is my patent alone, especially now with open sources, especially now with more than maybe less than 100 years, there is no new patent. It's all about invention, sorry, about uh, uh, what they call it, not a patent, but uh, uh, what they call it, um, uh, it's not, uh, uh, for example, there is no such uh, a new iPhone, there's no such a car, there's no air conditioner. So all what we have is more related to industrial design, which is look and feel about the, about the product itself. So even the, the percentage of patents decrease, but the competition increase. So um, the solution for that, as you say, we have to build our brand from, from day one. Without that, because we can't guarantee there's a competition or not. Even if we are on a small island in the Pacific Ocean. Right, 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 right. right. And even with my brand, I, I, do, I do have a patent, right? I'm going to have a patent. But you can't have a patent worldwide as a startup. I mean, you can't afford it. And it doesn't make any sense because people can still copy you, right? And so, but you can't copy a brand. You know what I mean? Like you can't, you can't steal heart and soul from 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 a company that's what's so magic about brand creation in my eyes a good example for that for example they what they call kobe one from china for rolex just an example even people they know they knew that okay it's kobe one and uh, that's very identical for the niche market they wouldn't go for kobe one why well and if yeah, yeah and if they go for a copy uh -huh. they only go for the copy until they can afford the real thing so in a way maybe the copy is a great advertising for the brand because at some point they will buy the real Rolex, yeah, they right? See, they will see the difference, by the way. Right, well, of course, it's gonna break. <laughs> you, another beautiful um, uh, quote from you, uh, and, and I really like that, the way you put it in your world. <laughs> your brand story should never focus on your actual product, I think the same direction, but in the state on the overall experience it provides. So, how we can as entrepreneur or as a startup or a business owner to create a story from day one. So we can't build a story without experience. For example, after six months, after one, one year, yes, I have experience, I have a story of a testimonial, I can tell my story. But if I'm just start now, how we can build and tell my story? Well, it, it comes back, it comes back to the idea of you understanding what is the, the essence of your brand. And then you build your communications around that, right? So let's say you're you're in healthcare, right? And healthcare is really very um, you know, uh reactive, right? But you want to be you want to be proactive, right? So you have to start thinking about okay, so how can I provide content to my tribe that helps them be and stay healthy? Right. Rather than, you know, say, hey, here are drugs you should take. Right. You know, that, that's like product. Product is here. Here are my drugs. You should take them. Um, but but brand is let's make sure you never need our product. <laughs> right? um, and so so and then when you start conversations about what is at the heart of what both your customer and you as a brand seek. Right. Which is wellness, which is health. Um, content will just flow freely right you can create you can create podcasts you can create um you know social media posts you can create all of these things that have nothing to do with the product but they're associated with the product right like they're they're a couple of degrees you know separated from the product but but that's it's quite frankly it's that it's that easy right it's that simple but the problem is and you know that very well the problem is that a lot of company owners they're like, okay, let's, let's push the product. Let's advertise, 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 right? Because they see immediate ROI, return on investment, right? They, they say, oh, the click-through rate is this much. These many people actually bought the product. Great. Let's push more advertising. Where in reality, that's, a short, that's, a, that, that's very short-sighted because you push one product instead of creating, creating love for your brand, right? Which that takes longer. 
right? And you don't see the money coming back immediately. But if you keep doing it, right? So instead of spending $1,000 on advertising one week, you spent $500 on creating great content, content that, that will spread, content that will just, you know, about about you know the, the 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 philosophy of your brand and 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 you know and helping people with your content Definitely. over yeah. the long run over the long run that is what's going to win we have to play between push and pull so i push for my yeah exactly i pull the cons uh, the, cons uh, the customers through for example a testimonial through tips and tricks from advice because uh, i will give just an example from kuwait as an example a couple, couple of doctors even they just, you know, have a video in their, uh, in their way to, to, to their clinic and just in daily basis, they just give like, for example, small uh, advice about the healthcare for dentists or something like that, just for free without any, you know, logo, nothing. Only, right. Yes. And they create their own track, you know, yep. so after that, yep. people yep. ask, oh, who's the doctor, who's his clinic, et cetera, et cetera. So it will be. So that's what we are looking for, because unfortunately, as you said, I know 100, not 100, 1,000, <laughs> I agree with you. Uh, most of the entrepreneurs or even the business owner, they focus on about their products, what the features, what the benefit. Okay, that's all the spotlight about your products. Okay, what about your consumer? What is in it for me? You know, yeah, yeah. You will, you will say something? No, no, absolutely, <laughs> I agree, yeah. Okay, so I will talk a little bit about your beautiful book, How to Launch a Brand. Uh, and by the way, for non um, uh, English speakers, uh, the book, the language is very simple and clean. There's no complication and practical. And sorry, I, I, I wrote in your book here. Okay, my notes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's how it should be. That's how it should be. Every one of my books should look like that. <laughs> Even here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, your book is talking about how to launch a brand. I know it's like a basic um, a questions, but always people asking about what's in its brand because we have different, uh, what they call it, perspective. We have almost, I just collect almost 25 definitions from different. Oh, yeah. More, almost 25, maybe, maybe more, I don't know. But till now, it's more than 25 definitions about the brand. So for, for you as a brand strategist, um, how we can define the brand for both targets, for the business owner and for the end users? It will be the same. Well, it's interesting because you could you could you could have twenty five different definition of brand just just out of my own interviews because every time every time someone asks me what does branding mean to you, I try to force myself to come up with a new way of saying it because because look, I mean, branding is such an esoteric organic thing right and it can be described in many ways and, and and most descriptions are perfectly right right um so it's it's really um you know it's it, it really it really depends really depends with what angle you look at it right and for the for the for the business owner versus the customer um brand should feel the same way Right. So, I mean, the way that I see brand this morning <laughs> and it's, and it's 8 a.m. It's 8 a.m. my time. So it's different. Um, I really see it. I, I really see what, what differentiates a brand from, from just, you know, like, like a commodity product type company is that as a brand, you define your heart and soul and you wear it on your sleeves. Right. Um, and those sleeves, look great, right? I mean, you wear, it, you wear it on your sleeves and you make sure that it always looks great. Um, last night I was thinking about something. I'm, uh, after this interview, I'm, I'm interviewing um, a, a screenwriter um, about his brand. He's, he, he's, you know, he has a brand. Um, and I was thinking about how, you know, TV series, right? Like, 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 you know, series on TV that go forever, right? You know, episode 218 of whatever, right? It's like all these big TV series. In the end, branding is not that much different than any other creative um, in, endeavor, right? Any, any big creative endeavor. So, so imagine you are writing Seinfeld. You are writing a new TV series. What do you have to do, right? You have to, you have to create a great story that people will, and, and think about that in the light of branding because it's the same thing, right? You have to, you have to create a great story that feels very new and different, but it needs to be super relatable. 
Like you immediately, oh, I relate to this person. I relate to this, right? It needs to be relatable. You can't have an ending of, you know, you can't think of an ending yet because it might go on forever. And, and whatever, whatever data you get from your viewers might impact, you know, how the next season goes, how the next episodes go, right? So that's, that's like a brand that's very organic. And then in the end, you need to have a very distinct audience. You need to say, okay, this show is for, you know, these type of people, this type of age group. Um, and then you have to produce it. You have to execute it in a beautiful, great way, right? That it's very distinctively that one TV series, right? And so to me, us brand people, right? We always like to come up with definitions and with this and this, but in the end, when you think about other big creative projects like creating a TV series, it's the same fundamental things that you need to, you need to look out for, right? So, you know, I, I, think, I think sometimes sometimes we like to talk, big talk about branding, but it's really, in the end, it's about, you know, creating, creating a concept, creating a strategy, executing it really well, and being super consistent along the way. And that's as simple as with every single creative project, right? Um, so. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I just, uh, just I recall uh, Bruce Lee, one of the Bruce Lee's interview talking about uh, the martial art and philosophy behind it. Brand is like a water. Everybody need it. And at the same time, it can reshape if you put it in the teacup, it will be a teacup, if you put it in the, in the, yeah. the glass, but it's still HTO. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, articles it's still and uh, the shapes different, okay, uh, and the features and benefits it's same. It's not change, but how we can utilize it, how we can drink it, <laughs> you know, how we can use it is different. Because maybe now we we define brand after the metaverse things. Maybe we they will redefine the brand. Maybe something else we don't know. After one hundred years from now, from this interview, we don't know what's happened <laughs> in the universe. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we will come back, maybe we will go forward, we don't know. So the brand, I think, uh, there's like a, a different perspectives, not about definitions, about the, what they call it, the impact. The bold one is just the reflection of the uh, this revolution after world, uh, the second uh, worldwide, and uh, the philosophy of Western school, school, which is they want to uh, create a human that want to consume more and more and more and more. And the centric for that is me, 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 and me. <laughs> I said to God and say. So, <laughs> so that's one perspective. The other perspective said no, because of the clutters, as Martin Neumeyer said, because of clutters, because of competition, it's very natural to think something you want to stand out. It's as simple as that. Um, so right. without exactly. any competition, this is the brand. It's not that. And other groups that say, no, it's something about related to globalization, Americanization. <laughs> so whatever that politics slash uh, economic, but I think both is, uh, that, uh, it's right. But it depends about us as entrepreneurs, about startup, how we can tackle it. You as, as, brand, strategi uh, uh, as a brand strategist in this, how, how you can see brand after 100 years from now? I know it's very hard. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's not, wow, 100 years. You know, these days, 100 years is so much longer than 50 years ago, 100 years would have been, you know. It's, um, I mean, I mean, look, in the end, I think, I think what you said before is, 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 is true, right? I mean, if, if you look into nature, right, when birds are mating, Birds need to make the crazy dance and they need to show off their wings and right. And it's not any different. It's yeah, and that 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 I mean that is from the beginning of mankind. And whatever whatever the metaverse which will bring, which who knows, because no one's seen it and it's in and and, and it's rebranding done way too early in my eyes, because I mean you're rebranding something that hasn't even whatever. But like whatever the future will bring right, with, with artificial intelligence and, you know, AR, all of that. The fundamental idea of everyone and every company wanting to stand out and on top of that, wanting to stand for something, right, have their own values, show who they are, you know, that's, that's, that's not even branding. <laughs> that's just life, right? And I think that that's what 
that idea, it's actually interesting, right? The idea of birds mating, you know, that's kind of what branding is, right? I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's like all these companies and they all have to stand out to different people and yes. attract different people, right? Some people might like the green wings or the blue wings or whatever, right? I, and then... Awesome. Yeah, like it. <laughs> yeah, and, and but 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 I mean that is as sim as simplistic as possible, right? But but that will not change regardless regardless which level we are going in, right? And how products will be consumed or advertised or marketed in the future, it will still every product will still have to stand out. Okay, in in this case, when we can say the brand is strategist or brand specialist or brand whatever we call it is burned because um, before 100 years or even before coca-cola it's an example there's no such uh, thing they called branding uh, just marketing even for the bare thing they are doing marketing by the way it's not branding <laughs> you know they promote themselves okay yeah. i'm the beautiful bird okay come to me okay and that's for for marketing and i agree what with you 100 percent because it's something embedded in our dna as a human being every one of us uh, doing marketing, even the new baby, when he's crying, you don't market it because <laughs> because he won't do it. So true, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because he need you know milk. Okay, he can't speak, he can't talk, so he uh, create this. Uh, we, we we heard your kid market market. Um, you know, it's it's herself or himself just before. <laughs> so it's uh, it's marketing in the in the works. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But you know, I mean, back to your comment about Coca Cola and like you know, yeah. like there was no branding. Yes. I mean. In the end, you know, I mean, branding comes literally from creating brand marks for cattle, right? To have different cows, different cattle, you know, like marked so that they differentiate. So you know which ones belong to which. So that's it, right? I mean, that's it. It's like a brand mark, right? And these days it is just so much more strategic. It's deeper, you know, it's, it, it, go, it is much more emotional where before it was very visual. The beginning was all about visual and, and through visuals, let's stand out. Today, you, you can't just stand out through visuals because that's not going to work in the long term. It's important, but it needs to be deeper in order for it to be, be, be a long ongoing. Yeah, it's really right, yeah. It's, it's, uh, the viewer is part of the puzzle, a huge puzzle. You know, it's not everything. A brand is not equal visual. Visual is just part of that puzzle. So that's coming to my uh, uh, um, second, uh, the other question. Because now a um, couple of uh, uh, clients, I sat with them before a couple of weeks, like from different backgrounds, and they mixed up between what's a brand, what's a branding, what's advertising, what's marketing. They don't care about that. What they care about is number one, ROI. Number two, which is if people are talking about, about their brand and always they, they are looking for, for example, the influencers or sponsor ad. They want just to more show off for their brand to be more presentable, to be more uh, exposure for, for their customer, for, for their target um, uh, customers. And regardless about what they call brand archetype, they don't care about that. Even if we sit with them, okay, this is, there's 12 types. They say, I don't care. What I care is how many followers I have, how many uh, influencers I, I can cooperate with, and people talking about, uh, about my brand plus if there are sales. So this as simple as that. So it, is this type of thinking is right or not right? Or what do you think about that? Because if, if they are right, so there's no, no such thing where they call brand archetype. They don't care about that. So they are looking for whatever does more effectiveness for their market, for their business, they, they will go for. Either for influencers or for sponsor ad, or for a new technology they want to use. So there's no such brand guideline for them. What do you think about that? Well, I mean, look, I mean, it's, 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 it's a constant struggle between data and emotion, right? I mean, I, I fully understand and, 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 and agree that, that data is, 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 is invaluable, right? I mean, the idea that we can just say, okay, this works, let's do more of this, or wait, this works, let's do more of this totally great but the problem is if you keep doing this forever you are losing track of who you are as a brand right if you always if you always go after the next shiny thing right like what are, you know then then people will be able to tell and you will never be able to really 
form a crowd around it because if one day you're doing Instagram because it's a new hot thing and then afterwards, you know, it's a, uh, you know, it's whatever new, new uh, social media, you should just, just jump immediately over there. You let everyone hang, right? You will never create that crowd. You will never create, you know, that, and that's, and that's the problem. And, you know, to, to, to those, to those, um, you know, CEOs and founders that are a hundred percent data, you know, and I, I don't even work with them. I don't talk to them. It doesn't even matter because at some point they will realize that, they keep having these companies that go for a couple of years and they make decent money, but then it goes nowhere. And then it not, never went for a couple of years because it doesn't have longevity. It's not a game. It's not a longevity game. And branding means you're in it for the long run, right? Marketing is short. Marketing is data. You need both, right? But, but brand, the, the, the brand strategy needs to determine what you do with marketing, right? Because if you don't have that, you could just start shooting and seeing what, 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 what sticks, right? That's a beautiful answer. I will take it from you to my clients. <laughs> <laughs> because the brand is just as simple as blueprint. And marketing, you can play around within that border, within, within, within that playground. You know, you can jump from there and there, but be aware, you have, you have blueprint, you have to, what they call it, the roadmap for it. So you have yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I have yeah. another challenge for you. <laughs> Great, I'm all I'm all up for challenges. <laughs> Some a couple of not couple, most of banks or in banking sectors, at least in our region, okay, they are looking for at the end of the year we have ROI, we have uh, this revenue, we have this turnover. We 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 it's all facts and figures only. Most of them they don't care about branding, about user experience, about brand archetype, about all these things, which is, I call it brand aura. They're, uh, they're focusing all, always about marketing uh, as if like a hard sell. Okay, we have this offer, we have this feature, we have this, this benefit. As same as mindset before 100 years ago. I have this product. Okay, yeah. we, have, we have the best, we have the cheapest, we have this and that. Right, 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 right. right. So how we can convince them? They, they say, please don't convince us. We have ROI, we have millions and millions. So we don't care about whatever that you say, <laughs> you say about brand. I mean, <laughs> the way that, look, I work, I work a lot with, in, in the financial sector, um, you know, so it's in the US, it's very different. Right. And I would tell, I would tell your, your banks, you know, in, in your region, I would just tell them, look at what has been going on in the United States over the last five years and how all of these fintechs came in yeah. and suddenly my bank is here and your bank is gone. And don't you think that over the next five years, the same thing will happen in our country? Because there are startups, there are entrepreneurs, and even the startups from outside of our area, they will come to us. Why? Because people don't like to bank. Banking is not interesting. It's not fun. It is very corporate. You, you always get fees. It's not transparent. It's not in my fingertips. And so that's the difference. If you think, if you think with, user, with the user in mind, right? If you have a user-centric strategy of, oh, what does the next generation really want? And then you develop something for the next generation. And it's not that the APR drops 1%. That's not it, right? It's, or that, you know, that our fees are lower or that we have more services. No, it's about, it's about making it as convenient and as easy as possible. The best banking experience is the one that you forget that you had. Right. Um, because because it, and that's and, and, and then you're never going to change bank because you don't even remember. It's right there. It just does its thing. Right. And so I would really tell your your clients that they need to they need to look at what's happening around around the world right now, um, because if yeah. they're on the forefront of that. Right. If they're on the forefront of thinking about their customer. Yeah. Then, then they will be that brand. Okay. I'll give you just for your information, Mr. Fabian. Here in Bahrain, we are very advanced in financial sector. In terms of fintech, we have no just e-check. We have everything that your bank account in your finger fingertips. As simple as that. Within milliseconds, you can transfer. You can get the same situation because still we are talking about products, about the services, about the features, about the benefits. 
you know, the same thing, either it's tangible or intangible. But my issue is about, as you said now, is about how we can create a brand which is based on user experience, based on a new BS, not USB. Because most of the banks, yeah, okay, there's a new technology, okay, we can hire that technology, we can use this technology. So it's not about technology itself, more than about the user, about the human. That would make, for example, Bank A is stand out combined with another bank. If there's a bank in Europe, they call it Air, Air Bank something, okay? It's very friendly, a look and feel, digital, very off, and even a couple of banks, I think, in Europe, uh, part of their branch and inside the coffee shop, okay? So yeah, they, yeah. they want to change the mindset because at the end, uh, at the end of the day, when you say bank, for me, is a bad image. <laughs> exactly. You know? No, exactly. But that's but see, that's the difference. That's what I mean. If you're an app versus a bank, right? Like I would rather have an app that does my banking than a bank, right? And even that idea of you can go into a cool coffee shop that's that's it's it's just a facade, right? It's just like it's just a bank dressed up as a cool coffee shop. But I see right through it. Yeah. I see right through it, right? It's still a bank, right? But yeah, the idea that, you know, should we have customer service that actually answers the phone and that's super, that, that, that's super informed about who you are and what your problems are, right? Like, should we be friendly? You know, should we be transparent? Should we not have fees where there shouldn't be fees, right? Should we constantly innovate so that you can do your banking faster, right? But that's what creates, that's what creates a likable yes. company. It's not even a likable brand. It's just a likable company, right? And, and on that, you can build anything. So when you said user experience, and I say user experience, it's the same thought, right? It's the thought that it is a delightful experience in an industry that is, that is absolutely not delightful, <laughs> right? I, I like what you said about uh, like uh, uh, a woman just dressed, you know, the same person, but just he changed his outfits. But still, still, uh, Mr. Fabian, Mr. Fabian, whatever that outfit he, he will come. So even, for example, a couple of banks, they're using the, uh, the what they call it, um, avatar or even uh, augmented reality, whatever that use, even they, if they want to use uh, 7D, I don't, what, whatever that they want to use a technology. It's not that the issue. Using the technology is not the issue. The issue is they, 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 they have to put the human as a centric thought what they call it CD, human-centric design. That's what we're missing. I, it's not just in our region, in different region all around the world, because they treating with the uh, customer as a number, not as a human. That, that right, right, right. No, exa exactly. It's, it's about seamless experiences. That's what it's yes. about, right? It, like, it, it's about, it, yeah. yeah. Even if you get just before a couple of days without naming any bank because they want to fire me, uh, they send uh, an email, dear, dear customer, I pick the phone, Say I have a name, and you know my name. So why you why send me a customer? So is a number for you or is a customer? After that, yeah. you change it. Okay. <laughs> so the, that awareness, I think they have. It's not just about banking sectors. All 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 uh, sector. They want to put as um, uh, Richard Branson said. I, I like his quote when he said, "My first customer is my first employee." I mean, my first mm -hmm. customer is employee. So always, we yeah, 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 yeah. Always have to put the human first, then the technology, then the services. Because if we we treat our employee and our customer as a human, everything is we can put it all together, you know. So that and that and that and that goes back to exactly where we started our conversation today when I talked about heart and soul, right? Yes. I mean that's what it human centric design, but it's all about heart and soul. It's about the heart and soul of the company, and then you know how does that relate to, I, I to will steal the customer? Your quote. I will steal the other quote. If you don't have soul infused into your venture, you will always be a product but never a brand. You yeah. you you helped me to cheat, you know your your code. <laughs> I like it. It's very beautiful. It's a balance. And uh, uh, okay, I just uh, I think we always we we uh, end up with last question, Mr. Fabian, with a beautiful book with other other books. What's your advice for two people, for those they are interested to become brand strategists, and for those they are they already have their own business, in terms of all this competition, all these clutters in, in very competitive markets all around the world. Because now it's not about Bahrain, Saudi Arabia is about, about all the world. Because it's open source, 
metaverse coming. So, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. So, what's your advice for both of them? So the brand strategist is one thing, easy to address. The other person, is that a person that runs a creative business or is that a person that runs a startup, like in any, any kind of sector? Okay, okay. So, um, I mean, for, for a brand strategist, what I would advise for, for someone who wants to turn into brand strategy, who wants to you know, go deeper into it, um, I think the most important aspect of, of brand strategy is really emotional intelligence. It is really being able to read the room and to ask the right questions. Because, because brand strategy is not so much about you being the most amazing strategist coming up with the most amazing ideas. That's, 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 you can be a graphic designer coming up with great ideas, right? For, but brand strategy is really about guidance, right? Guiding a client and a company to the next iteration of their brand, right? Pushing them to become something better. Um, and so I think, Emotional intelligence is it, and try to try to work on that and learn it and 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 and, and absorb that. And then for any for any startup for any company, um, how how to become how to become a better brand? Um, it is it is taking it is taking taking the time, and I might repeat myself, but it is it is taking the time to meet with your with your founder with your VPs in the company and just do a retreat for like half a day or a day and really sit down and only think about your brand, right? How do we solve problems? Which problems are we solving? Um, what, if, if we could describe our brand in one or two words, what would it be, right? The great brands can do that, right? If you think about Sappos, Sappos is not selling shoes, right? Um, they're selling shoes, but that's not what the brand is about, right? The brand is about customer service. It's about that wow effect, right? So the entire company is structured around that, right? Or Everlane. Everlane is all, yes, they're selling clothes, but they're all about radical transparency. The minute that you have this, 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 I call it brand DNA, right? But you have this, this, this guiding light of like, this is really at the heart of our brand. Yes, we have all these products, but that's the heart of our brand. Then you can market. Then you can do product development. Then you can everyone, then, then you can hire people who are like, yes, I am all about radical transparency, right? So if you're the one bank, you know, in your area that says we are 100% transparent, guess what? Every single millennial will start an account with you because that's what they care about. So all you have to do is think about what is that that's really at the heart of it. And, and, and that is something that every business owner should Really, it's it's like recalibrating your monitor, right? Or or you know, or or going to the chiropractor to have your back cracked, right? You have to do it every now and every every so often in order for you to really redefine your vision for the next year. So I would say do that once a year, and and you're you're a better you're a better brand. Perfect. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Fabian, for 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 your time and for your passion. Always, you have a fire you can spread around. <laughs> <laughs> And thanks for your time. And uh, I hope we see you soon in Bahrain, inshallah. Okay. <laughs> in we tried. Week. We tried before. I hope we can make it one day. Yes. It, it will. It, it will. It will happen, inshallah. It will happen. Uh, and uh, what was um, uh, the last uh, book you wrote, Mr. Fabian? And published in Amazon. Which one? The last book that I wrote was the brand therapy book. Yeah. So it's how to launch a brand bigger than this, and then uh, and then the brand therapy book. So yeah, those are the books. three. Currently, I have three. I have two more in the works, but it's going to take a little time. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> we are looking for that. Thank you, Mr. Fabian, again, and um, I'm looking forward to see you physically, not virtually, in the future. <laughs> Absolutely, my pleasure. Thank you. All right. Bye.